we all know what our grandparents look like. We know what older people look like. And yeah. we're seeing characters, at, well, actors that, that we're very familiar with physically. And, you know, when you transform them, um, it, some people are going to buy it and some people just aren't. And it's amazing right. to watch. I remember Tori Higginson talking about uh, uh, in a season one episode called Before I Sleep, they, she wakes up in a stasis chamber. And she remembers uh, ha having the makeup applied. And when she looked in the mirror, she saw her grandma. Yeah, which... I, I did that one. Um, I know I did wow. that one. The story was amazing. Um, well, uh, yeah, that, that that was kind of a funny moment for her. She was one of the actresses that looked in front of the mirror and just played with it for a while, which was really cool. And she got some really great expressions. One of the tricks to doing uh, film aging is kind of what you just mentioned. Um, the actor, the producer, the director... They usually want a sense of the actor in the makeup. And as you probably know, just from experiencing life, people don't really look like themselves, you know, 40 years down the line. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they might just have a nose that you are familiar or something like that. So it's, it's tricky to remain believable in aging because everybody wants to age beautifully. Right. And, you know, they don't, <laughs> they don't want to get, well, it's true. They don't want like a yeah. big jawline down here and their big waddle, the big, I mean, it's it's just part of life yeah and um the truth of the matter is we all age and some people do it beautifully uh most people you know they they drink garbage and they smoke and they you know they eat crap food abuse their and, bodies yeah right and and their bodies show it mm -hmm. so you know it's kind of this weird little like balance so whenever i'm doing concepts of age makeups i'm always trying to imagine what that character would live through those times you know what uh, the you know Tori's character. I didn't expect her to be like you know doing drugs or drinking garbage <laughs> or something like that. I so I tried to do her gracefully. Yeah, and, she was just uh, in a stasis pod. She's yeah, aging exactly. extremely slowly. So and beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and other characters, you know, you want to kind of really play up that stuff and really kind of show some of the results of their choices. You know, so um, it's it's really funny. I. Uh, <laughs> I, I can look at people and see where they're going to age and how they're going to age. And it's just something after doing so much aging design over the years, um, you just you just see it after a while. You just see what's going to yeah. be believably their situation in 40 or 50 years. It's the and human that, form and gravity is constant. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and their choices are, are, are going to be evidenced on their face, you know. So um, it, it sucks when you're like dating someone and you look across the table and you just go, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just photoshopped your face. Damn it. Uh, Why did I do that? You want to see how someone ages? Look at their parents. Look at, look at their, their parents, you know? Not, only, not always true, actually. Not always true. Uh, not always true, no. Um, it's, it's usually kind of the result of life choices. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we all make dumb decisions. None of us want to That's eat true. salad. <laughs> that's true that's a fair point did you uh uh I'm, I'm trying to look through um the information that i have here were you involved with the wraith makeup yes okay yes. so yeah, actually and, one of the wraith was even named after me there's a wraith called todd, todd that's correct yeah that, that was chris Hardall's character yes. i didn't know he was named after you that's a great trivia I have never had any of the writers come up and say, hey, we named him after you. But like, <laughs> I, I was kind of a permanent staple there for a while. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> who's going to name it Wraith Todd? So um, I guess it was an inside joke. Yeah, I, Shepard I, you know, did. Yeah, yeah that's funny. Yeah. And he was the most prominent uh, on the series. Yeah, Chris Hirenall, uh was extraordinary and, as that character. And Andy Frizzell, yeah, really you know, was. going back to the pilot. Yeah. Dan Payne was in. I've got I've got one of the the soldiers in my house. That it's an extraordinary <laughs> piece of makeup. What you guys did with James Robbins designs, yeah. And we yeah, talked James about this. He creates them, and then you will them into solid reality, which is just <laughs> an extraordinary achievement. It's kind of mind bending, you know, that he can oh, think it, gotta... and you guys can just oh well, we'll we'll have that in a few weeks. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. No, it, that was uh, quite a little uh, wraith factory there for a while. Absolutely. Uh, Chris Heardall has a little uh, kiss uh, makeup uh, concept. Yes, he does. It's, it's our little, because I love kiss growing up. Yeah. So we were doing a lot of tattoos on those things. And I, I, I must have been working too long because I, I was designing like so much stuff at the time. And 
uh, just crazy schedules. And then all of a sudden we ended up with a kiss tattoo on one of them. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, nobody notices. <laughs> and it's another example because Andy has, has talked to, at length about how, you know, when she first did it, I mean, especially for rising, she had gloves that she yep. would put her hands in. So those weren't actually her fingers. Right. And, you know, by the end of it, that had changed the makeup had got, she had they were doing something other than like a foam latex my understanding was at the start of it and they had moved you guys had moved later into other things that were just quicker and easier for her to emote and express herself right. with yeah the original yeah. ones were like an early form of uh, silicone makeups okay. um, just as silicone makeups were really starting to become on the scene <clears throat> a lot of development still had to be done and so we made the faces very translucent because you know take advantage of the material and her gloves were actually made out of uh, this um, this thermal plastic shit that you, we actually made out of sex toys. Wow! So Andy was wearing sex toys on me. Any port in a storm. <laughs> Jeez. Andy's great. She she was yeah. she was another one of those actresses or actors and actresses that can really pull it through the, the makeup, and uh, she really had such a presence in that thing. It was really really fun to watch. What do you see on the horizon in terms of this technology evolving uh, in all of its various forms, not just the tech, but the, um, the methodology, like you said, you know, that you are, are most excited about that's, that's in development that you're seeing people use, or that's, you know, a theoretical material that's coming out, you know, that, uh, or maybe more use with, with the digital space in terms of hybridizing what's, what's on set and what exists. Uh, yeah, in, in the makeup space and in the digital space. Yeah, you just answered it. All, all of that stuff is what we've got our focus on. I mean, um, we we like to be a studio that has more options, you know, than anybody else. So the, the mixing of practical and digital is a lot of fun, and I, there's really nobody else that does it like we do. There you go. Um, so that's great. Um, pushing more into you know scanning and three D printing is also something that we're doing. Um, you know, eventually uh, we'll, we'll really kind of push that. You know, like uh, there's a great studio in, in the Valley down in California called uh, uh, Legacy that has a really amazing digital print department. And, uh, you know, they don't even do molds much anymore. And so that's that's something that we need to, to push into. Uh, I think I mentioned before we hopped on, we're starting to make our own movies. Mm -hmm. or we have been making our own movies for a while. And we're starting to kind of do a lot more of that. Um, which, which to me is really what the point of all this is. Um, you know, like I said earlier, not the dis rubber nose making, but I, I always wanted to do more than just, you know, prosthetics. I, I wanted to create characters and I wanted to create moments in cinema if we could. And so now we're kind of like pushing even beyond. We, we want to make cinema, period. Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side.